Hello again. I'm here to bring you another coding challenge solution. This one is the single threaded CPU problem on leak code. Let's jump into it. Leak code. Company Google. Where are we? Single threaded CPU. Oh shit. This ought to be fun. 39.3%. 30 minutes. Okay. Oh boy. This seems a little wordy. You are given n tasks labeled from 0 to n minus 1, represented by a 2D integer array tasks. Okay, so like this. Where task i is the in queue time and then the processing time. Means that the i task will be available to process at in queue time and will take processing time to finish. You have a single threaded CPU that can process at most one task at a time and will act in the following way. If the CPU is idle and there are no available tasks to process, the CPU remains idle. If the CPU is idle and there are available tasks, the CPU will choose the one with the shortest processing time. If multiple tasks have the same shortest processing time, it will choose the task with the smallest index. Once a task is started, the CPU will process the entire task without stopping. Uh, can finish and start a new one instantly, okay, whatever. Return the order in which the CPU will process the tasks. This is fun. I think it's relatively simple with a priority queue. Yeah. I feel like we just need to make a priority queue and sort it, really. Uh, or structure the data appropriately so the priority queue just works. So that ties get broken in the correct way, for example. So let's go over these examples. So 0, 2, 3, 1. The event goes as follows. At time equals 1... Task zero is ready to process. Okay, what is the the index? So what's the order of these again? In queue time and processing time. So this was in queue time one, two, three, and four. And two, four, two, one. Hmm. Ah, I see. So there's no other. So it's going to start with this one because there's no other time. So at time one... Task zero is available is available to process. Available tasks. So it's the only one processing. Ooh, this may be a little harder than I anticipated. Also at time one, the idle CPU starts processing task zero. Available tasks is none. At time two, this one's available, but we're still halfway in between here. Oh wait, are we? Yeah, we are. At time three, task two is available. Oh, is available to be processed. Also, time three, the CPU finishes task zero. That's true. And starts process, processing task two as it is the shortest. Because it has two. And this other one has four. Okay. I think that's relatively straightforward. Let's see about this one. So they all start at seven. Oh, this one's got to be easy. Four, three, two, zero, one. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Here's another question. Can two tasks have the same time and processing time? And queue time and processing time? I mean, presumably, yeah. Now that would make it... Okay, yeah, the tie then goes to the one with the lowest index. I see. Hmm. I almost think priority queue is still the way to go, possibly. So if we were somehow able to keep everything in order by the three parameters let's see let's copy this so index is is the least priority and it only it only matters in places of ties but no not necessarily so we can't so if we added an index to this That wouldn't necessarily be the priority. Well, we need to store that somewhere. This is tricky, man. All right. 
I'm going to interrupt myself here because I don't think I adequately articulated myself well when I was recording this. So to quickly summarize, after spending a few minutes reading and thinking through this problem, it was pretty clear that a priority queue was necessary because the problem demands these tasks being prioritized dynamically as time progresses. The priority queue is an efficient way to accomplish this. What took me a while to understand is that we still needed another ordered structure to hold the tasks until they were ready to be added to the priority queue. Also, once a task is ready to be prioritized, in other words, time has progressed enough to make it available, then we have to not only put it in the priority queue, but we have to change which values for each task comprise the priority. So here's a quick example. Let's say we have these five tasks. The first thing we want to do is embellish each with their respective indices so we don't lose that information. Then we want to sort the items. Now every time we've arrived at a new time step, we can efficiently pop off all the items that are ready. So for instance, at time step one, we'll pop off these two and put them in the priority queue. But as I mentioned, we need to change the values that comprise the priority. Of the three values, we don't really care about the NQ time anymore, so we can just put that towards the back, although you don't really need to include it at all, to be honest. After that, we just need processing time at the front and index right after that to break ties. This was the fundamental idea I was working out. Now back to the video. So we're going to have a sorted list that has the data. And then we're going to have a queue, or we're going to have a priority queue. And then we're going to keep track of the answers in some history or res. So we'll have a res. We'll have a priority queue. So heap, so um, import heap queue. We'll have a time variable, which is zero. And then we'll append our task, or we, we need to sort our tasks and also put the third item in there. We need to put the index in there. The index needs to be the mill number because it needs to be second priority. So shores processing time will be the first priority. And then, then this index will be the second one. NQ time does not matter. So it goes last. And as it turns out, it doesn't matter because between these two, there will always be a unique one. So if this were a tuple consisting of one, two, and three items, the first two items will guarantee uniqueness because the index is unique as a last resort. So if the processing time is the same, the index will be the thing that makes the priority queue work after that. But we do need in queue time at first. That's how we're going to do our initial sort. So we'll kind of transform the data that's in the sorted list as it goes into the priority queue. We'll transform it as it's going in there. So, all right, I think I got a good handle on this. So we need some sorted list, but that, now we need to iterate over task. So for um, T and tasks, or how about for I and range length of tasks? And what do we want to do for I and range length of the tasks? Well, we want to make a tuple that has in queue time first. So it's tasks at zero. And it doesn't really matter what we do after that, I think. But we do need to store that other information. So we'll just say tasks one and then I. And I could use a queue here or a double into queue, a deck. But instead, I'm just going to reverse it <laughs> so I don't have to import deck. I hope that's not too confusing. Actually, uh, let me do this in two lines. This this line's getting unwieldy. Yeah, we'll just say Q equals this, and then Q dot sort reverse equals true. So we'll be popping from the right, um, but we can basically think of it as a deck, and we're popping left. Really, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. We don't need to be, we don't need to pop from both sides. So we don't really need to use a deck. We can just do it this way. Anyways, ten minutes. The next thing we need is our staging. Let's just call it staging. 
And this is the priority queue. So how do we do that? Well, a priority queue is just a list, but it's sorted a special way, I guess you can think of it that way. So we'll just create a list, empty list, okay. And now we need to um, return res. But what do we need to do before that? So this is when we start shifting stuff from the queue to our staging, to our priority queue. So how do we do that? Well, we can pop items to get the first one. But here's the thing, we might need to pop multiple ones. What if they all start with the same same one, like all these sevens? So we want all those to go in the staging. So we can say, we this is our initial fill. Um, will there be at least one task? Uh, yeah, there will be at least one task. So we know there's going to be one item. So we really need to figure out the value of this. If it's seven and they're all seven, then we need to add all of them. So we need the value of that first one. So since, again, we're operating in reverse here, we'll just do uh, tasks, or sorry, Q, negative one, and we want the zeroth item. That's the in queue time. And then this is our start time. Or we can just say time equals this. Now, this is where we can do our loop, actually. I think we can make it all the same. So um, we need some grand loop here. I, I don't really know what to say here now, but we need some grand loop that keeps doing these couple processes over and over. And I'll decide how to clarify this later. But, but basically, the first thing we need to do is transfer everything everything that can into the staging into staging so how do we do that we could say while q while there's a length of q and the last item has a value in q time that is less than or equal to time we can do q.pop and that's our item. And it has three things in it. It has in queue time, then processing time, then index, and then index. Uh, I, I don't know how to spell in queue time. No, is it really spelled that way? Whatever. Okay, so this is where we transform the data and we push it into the heap. So. We need to push it onto the priority queue, the heap, our minimum heap. So heap queue dot, how do you, wait, how do you do this? Or I think it's heap push. Yeah, heap push. So we need to push an item there in order, and we want it to be ordered by the processing time, the index second, and then the in queue time. Okay. So now we push it to the heap, Actually, we push everything that can onto the heap. So that's good. Oh, yeah, heap Q, heap push, it takes a, a list. Heap push takes uh, the actual heap. I forgot how to use this API. So staging is the first argument, and the thing we want to push on to staging is the second argument. So now we can finally process something. So let's heap Q dot heap pop that top priority item according to its processing time and index, the minimum of each. OK. Item to process. So the item that we're going to process, we're going to put into res. And we can destruct this, actually, too. In fact, it's going to destruct like this. Processing time, index, and then queue. It's going to destruct the same way we, we put it in there. So that's the one that we're taking away. We want the time to increase by the processing time. And we also want to append to res the index, I believe. Yep, index. We don't care about the queue time anymore. I mean, it's pretty much all we have to do there. I mean, is that all we have to do? The one other thing we need to do is we need to break out of this somehow. So if not Q and not staging, 
break or return res in fact we can just return there ah but what if we get stuck so i'm thinking about this example oh this is a little i'm glad i thought about this but if we think about this example what happens if this number's this number's like nine and this number's like 15. we somehow need to advance to that time so in fact we need some way to to shift time so really i want to take that out and i want to move time along appropriate i want to move the time along if there's nowhere to move it. so at the beginning is a perfect example of this actually because uh, using this example because there is nothing on zero but there is something on one so we put a bunch of items into the priority queue and then we pop one off 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 we want to do that in a loop too right no we only want to process one because the time is changing we might need to add in other things that have a higher priority so that that's good glad i had that thought but we still have the time issue so if there's nothing in each then we can return but if uh if q and not staging then we need to then i think this is where we need to add this we need to pop the item off of q or we can just set time is equal to actually it's whatever i did up here 12 seconds okay all right i'm going for it damn it okay what i do wrong oh no wait what oh it might be something dumb q negative one zero so time is definitely an int and q is a list of tuples and task zero oh shoot I made a fundamental error here. This is supposed to be I. Dang. So after fixing my minor mistake, I was able to get a passing submission. I spent a few minutes comparing my solution to other solutions in the discussions. And not only is this solution similar to how other people have solved it, it's pretty performant as well. So I'm pretty happy with it. Anyways, That'll do it for now, and I'll have to catch you all next time.